The House Foreign Affairs Committee released yesterday a nearly 400 page report that does a deep dive into the chaotic 2021 withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan. The chairman of that committee, Congressman Michael McCall, joins us tonight with more on that. Sir, thank you for joining us. Good to see you. Um, that report is a culmination of a three year investigation, 400 something pages. Can you highlight for our viewers what some of the most important findings are and what, if anything, in that report surprised you? Well, it's a very, it's a historic document. I mean, we interviewed every relevant witness, try to get every relevant document to uh, create the most comprehensive record of the events, the disastrous events of the uh, withdrawal from Afghanistan and the way it was done. I think the biggest takeaway for me was the, uh, the lack of cohesion between the military and the State Department and the White House. They had two very separate missions. Military, their goal was to retrograde the commander in chief, made the decision to go to zero. That means all military, all contractors, all air cover. Once you remove that from Afghanistan, the Afghan military had no chance of defending itself. Um, at the same time, State Department's goal was to try to keep the em embassy open as long as possible. They had a different point of view that was more r rosy, I guess you will, if rather than the military, which had a very grim assessment of what was happening on the ground. The military saw the Taliban taking over Afghanistan uh, very quickly, uh, and it was very foreseeable. Uh, the State Department and White House, that's what we call it, willful blindness, just quite frankly didn't want to see the truth. And they actually, in a way, I would say, misrepresented to the American people about what was happening. So by the time a evacuation plan is executed, the Taliban has already overrun Kabul. Now, the State Department, by law, has the duty and responsibility to initiate an evacuation. They failed to do so until Kabul had fell and the Taliban were on their way to the embassy. So what happened after that was the ambassador Wilson flees the embassy to the airport so he can escape. He leaves his employees behind, including the Afghans, and thousands of classified documents. And also passports were burned. Then they put the Taliban in charge of screening uh, American citizens and Afghan allies, screening their travel documents and passports to get through the checkpoint. Many Americans did not make it out because the Taliban was there. Once they got to the airport, if they were lucky enough, at that point, uh, it got very dangerous. Our Marines were put in a very hostile situation with very little cover. We had threat reporting of a suicide bomber on the very day it happened at Abbey Gate, almost to the very exact time. Uh, and yet it was allowed to happen because of the chaos that ensued. Because of that, we have 13 dead servicemen and women. We have 170 dead Afghans, 45 injured Americans. Uh, and this didn't have to happen. There's an old adage, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. This administration planned to fail. Well, you say this administration. Who do you blame for this happening? Or where's the breakdown between the military, the State Department, the, the, the executive office? Where does the breakdown happen in all of this? It's a great question. So, you know, by law, it emanates with the chief of mission. That would be the ambassador. The ambassador Wilson had to make that call. He would not do that because he thought an evacuation was a failure. He thought the embassy could actually stay open through a Taliban takeover, which is extremely naive. Once he did evacuate, um, people's highs, the Secretary of State, uh, to the National Security Council, where our investigation is led, and I'm a federal prosecutor, right? We go, you build your case from the bottom up, facts and the evidence. All the testimonies lead to the National Security Council as the ones making these poor 
judgments of error, including the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan. This now puts you square into the White House decision-making process uh, as well. I want to ensure that if we have another Saigon or Kabul, that something like this will never happen again. We will have legislation to address this, but we also condemn the DOD and State Department employees responsible for this. I was with the Gold Star families last night. They're gonna get the Congressional Gold Medal on behalf of their children tomorrow. They want accountability. There has been zero accountability. Our resolution will give them some accountability because every one of them, every one of those employees have been promoted since the evacuation. Part of your, your response right there just answered my next question, which was why do this report? I think you just pointed out some of that. But let me ask you about the criticism about the report, which surely you had to expect this to come from the Democrats when they say that this is all just a, a political ploy. The timing is just right for the election. The State Department spokesman today said this is meant to divide instead of inform. How do you respond to all that criticism? You know, it, it was by choice. <clears throat> the date of releasing this report was not by really choice. They didn't give, give me much of a choice. We were um, time and time again obstructed by State Department. I had to serve subpoena upon subpoena. I had to threaten the secretary with a motion to compel, which has never happened to the secretary of state just to get a dissent cable from the embassy of 24 employees crying out for help. Even today, the secretary will not testify and I had to serve a subpoena on him and I'll have to do the same. Jen Psaki, it took eight months to get her before my committee. I would have much preferred to have come out with this a year ago, but I didn't have all the facts and evidence. Their goal in my judgment was to delay this as much as possible until after the election because they are concerned about this and they should be but this was not a partisan exercise on my part i want to get to the truth and to do so i needed the documents i needed the witnesses and i still need more documents and witnesses but it was their obstruction that has pushed us to this time 